two current laptops that are darn near the lightest and most powerful options in the lower end of the Apple MacBook line. The MacBook Pro 13 and the MacBook Air. Which one of these comes out on top when they are so close in specs, price, and features? Let's find out. There's there's two of them, I can't slam them. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. This video was actually, I'm full disclosure, this video was actually kind of hard to plan out and execute for a couple of reasons. One, both of these devices are really close in power. Maybe not specs, but when you normalize the price, when you spend the same amount of money on both, you get very similar capabilities out of each of these computers. And two, that price, they are within really, really close reach of each other, if not identical when you spec them similarly. But despite being so close, they are actually strikingly different. And that shouldn't be a surprise as they are targeting vastly different audiences. Let's start off with the biggest differences between the two devices and that comes from the internals. The MacBook Air 2020 comes equipped with the 10th generation Intel processors across the line. This base model, which this is the base model, has a 1.1 gigahertz dual core i3 chip with eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And it comes standard with 256 gigabyte of solid state storage. And you get all of that for right around a thousand bucks. If you do need some more power, you can upgrade the MacBook Air all the way up to a 1.2 gigahertz quad core i7 chip with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte hard drive, man. A two terabyte hard drive in such a small computer? The, fut the future is definitely now, like that's crazy. I can't, younger me would have been just in awe of that. The MacBook Pro 13 inch has two sub models. It's not, it's not as linear of a path as the MacBook Air line. The lower end base model of the MacBook Pro 13 line, which this is, it comes equipped with a 1.4 gigahertz quad core eighth generation i5 chip with eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. That's just a little bit slower than the RAM that comes with the MacBook Air. This also comes standard with 256 gigabytes of solid state drive and it runs you around $1,300. This lower end line comes with a chassis that only has has two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Much like the MacBook Air, you can spec this much higher, all the way up to a 2.3 gigahertz quad core 10th generation i7 chip with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a four terabyte solid state drive. Just, do you even need external drives anymore? The higher end chassis does have four Thunderbolt 3 ports, okay. That's not, I don't like talking about specs, that's enough of the specs. Let's talk about what really, let's talk about the things that actually matter. And first off, and if you know me, you know what I'm gonna say is the keyboard. Both the Air and the Pro have put the much maligned butterfly keyboard to rest. Both of these devices have the new Apple Magic Keyboard, which originally debuted on the 16 inch MacBook Pro from last year. And I gotta say, can you hear this? I love. I love this keyboard. You've heard me say this in every video that I talk about this new Magic Keyboard, you've heard me say that several of times. I spend most of my life typing. As soon as we're done with this video, I'm gonna go back to work. It's gonna be typing emails. Later today, I'm gonna be typing scripts for YouTube, or I'm just gonna be typing because I enjoy it because I'm crazy. Typing, it, it, I'm the everyday typist. We're rebranding the channel. As much as I do like typing on these new keyboards, what I'm more happy about is the better reliability. Now, I personally had never had any quality control issues with the butterfly models, but I've seen enough like through Twitter or through other creators, I've seen enough people have significant issues that I'm really not sorry to see them go in any way, shape or form. Continuing to talk about the physical design around the keyboard, the big difference between the two is the MacBook Pro does have the touch bar right above the keys, where the MacBook Air has physical function keys. Now, I personally prefer the physical function keys on the MacBook Air. I cannot, honestly, I am I spent, while I was typing the script out, I tried thinking really hard of a time where I ever used the touch bar and thought, wow, this, real, this experience was served better because this was a touch functionality instead of, you know, just hitting a function key. Maybe I'm nitpicking. I've been known to be a nitpicker in the past. I just, I do not like it. Another physical difference between the two that's small but noticeable is the way the cases themselves are shaped. The shape of the MacBook Pro is pretty standard and concise all the way around. The MacBook Air though is angled down ever so slightly. And you might not think that this does much, but I do think it makes the typing experience just a little bit better. And we've already discussed ad nauseum how much I like to type. So if you can make the typing experience a little bit better, 
I'm the big thumbs up. I'll give you two thumbs up. One of the negatives about both devices is they both have the same 720p FaceTime HD camera, and here's a quick example. Okay, and we've moved to where my wife does her normal web meetings so you could see actually how the cameras look. So this is the video quality and the audio quality coming from like an untreated kitchen from the MacBook Air. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. And again, both cameras are 720p FaceTime cameras. So this is probably not gonna look all that great. And this is the camera on the MacBook Pro 13 inch in the same spot, in the same everything, the same, the lighting might be just a little bit different because the sun is coming through this window. Just, it shouldn't look that much different because they're both 720. I mean, when's the last time you had something in 720p, right? Like, I think the last thing that I had that was 720p was a TV from like 10 years ago. So 720p, kind of old. Really wish Mac would update these to at least 1080p. So yeah, this is the video quality. This is the audio quality out of both computers' web cameras. Back downstairs. When it comes to weight, I could weigh these and tell you that the MacBook Pro 13 is ever so slightly heavier. But honestly, or in all real usability purposes, they are the same weight. You would not be able to tell the difference between these two devices if either of these was in your backpack. They're roughly the same darn weight. I don't know what else to say about the weight. Now, power is probably gonna be the biggest differentiator between the two devices, and maybe not in the way you'd expect. Like I said in the beginning, the MacBook Air across the entire line has the brand new 10th generation Intel chipset, from the dual core i3 all the way up to the quad core i7. And you'd probably think, and I probably would think too, given the newer chips, that that would give even the lowest end the advantage over the MacBook Pro, which like we discussed earlier, does have access to the newest chipset, but only in its higher end version. The base model gets slower memory and a slower processor. But it, it doesn't though, actually. Leads to the opening statement that these two devices are definitely marketed to and provide benefits to different groups of people and that's okay. There are plenty of videos out there that will hit you with Geekbench scores and other things which I'm not that concerned about. The hardest process that I run on my computers is video editing for this channel. In those examples, I use 4K 10-bit 422 intra codec files from a Lumix GH5, and that's a pretty, those are pretty significant files from both a CPU and a GPU perspective. You can actually watch those tests happen live as I've got editing videos based on both of these machines. And I'll leave those linked in the description below. Needless to say, the base model i3 and the MacBook Air really struggled to handle the workload using Apple's own Final Cut Pro X. While we were editing, there were plenty of dropped frames, it was slow to perform simple tasks, and the rendering took ages like that is a long that's a long time the base model macbook pro with its eighth generation i5 was much much faster even with three layers of 10-bit footage it had very little issues it was able to keep up with all of my edits and rendered a five minute clip in a little over seven minutes. Even though these are both base models, this isn't exactly a one-to-one -one comparison, and we'll talk more about why that is in the recommendations at the end. I think the biggest problem with the MacBook Air for anything other than just like browsing, typing, doing normal word processing stuff, or regular content consumption is something several others online have already pointed out, and that's the cooling system on the MacBook Air isn't directly tied to the processor. So the more you ask of the MacBook Air, the hotter it's going to get, leading towards lower performance performance in some cases. The MacBook Pro 13's cooling system is actually set up in a way that cools the processor. Hooray! I just would have assumed that was a standard practice. And that does lead towards even the lower end of the product line still having really, really good performance, especially for the price. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Which of these devices comes out on top? And okay, let's step back to what I said about why the power wasn't exactly a one for one. When comparing the base model Air to the base model Pro, it's not exactly the same. If you get the $1,000 MacBook Air, you get a dual core i3. And if you get the $1,300 MacBook Pro, you get a quad core i5. But if you spend $1,300 on both, you get a similarly spec MacBook Air with a newer generation quad core i5 with more storage, like 512 gigabytes of solid state drive as opposed to 256 on the MacBook Pro. So why not, why even have the MacBook Pro base? Why not just get the MacBook Air? That's a pretty good point. If you were just looking to do regular daily laptop work, I would probably go with the MacBook Air. I've already recommended the base model to some of my wife's friends who are looking to get into their very first Mac laptop. 
It's got the same camera, the same features, the same physical ports, and there will be no noticeable difference in daily operations. This is actually, I really like the MacBook Air when I'm not doing power stuff. But if you are looking to do content creation in any way, shape or form, I would buy the MacBook Pro 13. It's just the better machine if you want to create anything. It has no problem handling several layers of 4K video and it renders that into a 4K video file much faster than the MacBook Air. You can extrapolate from there how much better it will do in all sorts of applications from just regular student use to coding to photo editing like this is a this is a very powerful computer and I would recommend this to online content creators. And if you like this video and you actually want to see a little more about how powerful the MacBook Pro 13 actually is, you can check out the video where I showed it editing that 4K footage that I've talked about like three times during this video. And you can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.